Hello everyone and uh, thank you for being here and watching uh, the new episodes uh, of uh, Learn from the Greeks. Uh, it's an informative and entertaining uh, initiative featuring uh, successful West Coast Greeks um, from different fields who share with us uh, their uh, uh, insights and expertise. And uh, we have uh, the honor to host today uh, the director of uh, the UCLA Stavros Niarchos uh, Foundation, Center for the Study of uh, uh, the Hellenic uh, Culture, Ms. Sharon Gilstel. So thank you for being here with us. And um, please uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, what you do. So I'm a professor of Byzantine art and archeology span at UCLA. I've been here for 16 years. Before that, I taught at the University of Maryland. And for the last three years, I've had the honor of directing the UCLA Stavros Niarchos Foundation Center, as well as holding a wonderful chair named uh, for the family of George P. Kolovos. And this is an enormous honor for me and I think also for the Greek community. It is indeed. It's a pleasure for us to have you here. Thank you. Uh, so I would like to ask you a personal question about if you have um, a place in Greece that you feel a special connection to, uh, like a, a family villa, it's a holiday destination, or, um, or um, an archaeological site, or something like that. That's a great question, Christina. I have two places in Greece that are special to me. Um, the first is Thessaloniki, where I was a student. And I lived for five years and the city is very dear to my heart. I know every road, every corner of the old city. And of course, it has such a rich history, both Byzantine, but also Roman and Hellenistic before that, but also very interesting and sometimes difficult modern day history. So that city has been really critical to my formation as a scholar. But the second area that's also very special to me is the Mani which is where I've done the bulk of my work for the last 20 years. And North and South, huh? For you. North and South, and a completely different character of people, different topography. Um, I think it's the opposite ends of Greece, and I think it gives me a full understanding of Greece, both its cities and its rural villages. Yeah, I'm from Thessaloniki as well. My mother is from Thessaloniki, so yeah. I have a special preference on the north of Greece. <laughs> yeah, so of course, Thessaloniki is the most beautiful city in Greece. There's oh, not that with the best food as well. Um, so another question. Do you have um, a prominent Greek that you look up to? And uh, how has this figure inspired you, influenced you? And it could be right from uh, uh, artist, athlete, or it could be a historical figure. So the people who inspire me are the villagers in Amani and especially the old Maniatises and I became very close to two of them. One was the subject of a book I wrote named Canala Yoropoulou from the village of Piondes mm -hmm. and the second Metaxia Anapliotti from the village of Vanvaka. And I think there's something about these women and their resilience, their cleverness, their, willing to, their willingness to step back and see life for what it is with all of its good and bad, their sense of family, um, but also their amazing humor. And I think for most people, they don't get a sense of Magnatus as having a sense of humor, but both of them were very smart and clever women who um, saw life for what it was. And I think for me, their stories inspired me, their lives inspired me. And I continue to think about them as I work in my research and as director of the center as well. Good, good examples. I mean, they're both women, so mm -hmm. it's a good example for us that we're all women here. Yeah. Uh, so my next question will be for um, the UCLA. And uh, what was the, um, the idea behind the collaboration, at first place, the idea behind the collaboration of uh, UCLA and Stavros Niarchos Foundation? And uh, following up to that, 
Um, what is your opinion uh, nowadays taking into account student numbers and um, foreign and Greek participants to the UCLA's events, to the center's events, um, about uh, Los Angeles' uh, interest to Greek civilization and culture? Well, those are a huge question. So, of course, yeah. the, the, our relationship with the Stavros Niarchos Foundation started with a letter of inquiry where we asked them if they might be interested in uh, endowing a center at UCLA. And they were, from the beginning, very interested to start a center in a public university, and particularly in Los Angeles, which has a very large Greek community mm -hmm. and is also the center of the film community and has, of course, a very well known. Greek Film Festival. So from the beginning, they saw uh, collaboration at UCLA as a way to reach a community that for many years had wanted a cultural center. And we were, I hope, able to step into that void to provide cultural activities for the broader Los Angeles community. And by broader, of course, I mean extending into Orange County and also northward towards Santa Barbara so we started from the beginning uh, something very unusual for um, a university Greek center, and that was to begin with a full partnership with the Greek community. Most university academic centers are divorced from the surrounding community. They yeah. offer academic programming for the faculty and students, but from the very beginning, our center was marked as different. And I'm so appreciative to everyone from the community who gave us advice, who've made contributions to the center, who participate in our programming. I think now, a few years after undertaking this enormous uh, push to create a center, I feel like we've been successful in, it's been, um, we officially launched a year ago, but before that we were for two years trying to raise the money to create the center. And to step back for a moment, I should say the initial uh, requirement from the Nearcos Foundation was, we'll give you $5 million, but you need to show us that the community is interested and invested in creating a center. And so they asked us to raise $3 million. To date, we've raised $4.1 million for the center and people continue to contribute. And I think the reason is, is that people see the value in what we're doing. Um, especially in the period of COVID, we have continued offering weekly events, often with institutions in Greece. For example, with the Benaki Museum, we offered 10 lectures that were attended by over a thousand listeners, mm -hmm. not only from LA, but also from the entire West Coast, from the greater United States, from uh, England, and from Greece. And we kept this community together with weekly lectures. They were very excited to come participate with us. And so it's, one of them. <laughs> it's been amazing. I feel like they've become friends. We started recipes, we started baking with them, and now they attend everything else we do. And we have a number of other collaborations planned that are really exciting for us. But so that um, continued engagement with the community has been at the center of our goal for the center. And mm -hmm the community and also with other universities. Uh, for example, we've collaborated with UC San Diego and now we're collaborating with Stanford and UC Berkeley on a very large conference as well as Sacramento State. Mm -hmm. uh, we've of course been in contact with Loyola Marymount and USC more locally, mm -hmm. but also with Greek universities. We have collaborations with the University of Crete and the University of Athens and Thessaloniki. So it's been very important for us to partner with academic institutions, reach deeply into the community, and also connect LA and Greece. Bro, well, you're, doing, you're doing a great job. I can, can see that. I mean, I participate to many of your events and I see the participants and the interest behind that, but uh, I hear the numbers right now and they're pretty impressive, taking into account that you're, all, you're one a year or two maximum that you have this uh, collaboration. Thank you. It's been, it's been a thrill to see the reaction from the community and also to have the very positive response and the eagerness of Greek scholars to come through Zoom or 
in the future to actually travel to LA mm -hmm. to present for the community. And that's, that's exciting to me because it means the university is reaching beyond its traditional walls into what we call public humanities. And that's of course what a public university is charged with doing. Yeah, good job. So uh, you bring me to my next question. You already mentioned about COVID. So we would like to learn uh, if you have any practices, best practices to share, because how has COVID affected one of the most reputable universities in the United States and in the whole world? Of course, UCLA um, closed to live teaching very early on, but we've continued remote teaching and um, in a few weeks, I started a class of over 270 students. And I think the success of our teaching has been to keep the students engaged and interested, and also to understand that we also understand what they're going through and that we change our teaching practices to accommodate their needs at this moment. So from the aspect of teaching, we're all working very hard to create an atmosphere that embraces the students' needs at the second. From the perspective of the center, very early on, we uh, thought either we could just close the center and do nothing, or we could rise to the challenge and actually do something exceptional. And I think we did something exceptional by offering programs and lectures by people who would never have the chance to come to LA, or for whom we would have to pay such exorbitant fees to bring them from Greece, for example, to visit for a simple lecture. And so what we were able to do was actually expand the offerings. Uh, and now we have people knocking at the door to come give uh, remote lectures for us. The other really exciting thing, and I think everybody knows this, is that the traffic problems in Los Angeles prevent yeah. <laughs> a lot of people from coming to our events on campus. And not only that, there are people who, for various reasons, um, can't come to lectures at UCLA either. The parking is prohibitive or walking across the campus is difficult for them. So this um, practice now of starting remote lectures, something that will continue remote events, including Greek language day this year, um, allows the community to gather together in ways that they couldn't before. So of course there are things missing. Nobody is able to dance together. Nobody's able to eat the great food that we usually serve together, but they are able to connect with people very intimately in ways that they couldn't. To have access behind the scenes to a museum, to get to speak to curators about, well, my grandmother left this to me. What do you think it is? So I think they've been able to really connect with people in ways they couldn't have. And I think as well, we've held very intimate things under COVID, like um, meet Hellenic authors to allow Los Angeles Greek novelists to come and present their research or their, their publications. And that's given them an audience that they might not have otherwise had, where people who were stuck in the house due to COVID were able to read four fantastic novels over the summer and then speak to the novelists. And the same thing with our Modern Greek Book Club. These are all activities that were continuing in COVID. And in fact, we've increased the number because we see that there's a thirst for people to connect with their Greek heritage. So if someone would like to follow the same career as yours, uh, what should they do? Where should they focus on? What tips can you give? So right now I have two careers, one as a professor and one as a director of the center. So for the professor career, uh, one has to, of course, learn languages, many languages and travel and get to know Greece. And for me, I spent many, many years excavating at Greek sites and asking questions and walking the streets and looking at things. I think the most important thing is a sense of curiosity and then maybe finding a mentor who can guide you to the right university or to the right set of readings or the right kinds of support. But in terms of my being director, I could say maybe this, yeah, maybe this single most thing that helped me in being a director, well, two things. The first that people don't know is that my dad owned a restaurant when I was growing up 
And so I learned from a very early age to actually talk to people and listen to their stories. And I think that's very important for people to hear what people have to say, what their concerns are. The second thing is that I spent a number of years actually working in government, both in Washington and in New York City. Wow. And so that gave me a certain ability um, to maybe understand administratively how um, a center like ours should function. And, and part of that government was experience in New York was also working with members of the Greek community. And so from a very early age, I had experience of um, how important the church was to the Greek community uh, and also the kinds of organizational um, divisions there were among different communities in the United States. Mm -hmm. Nice, impressive uh, resume you have. <laughs> and um, what did your failures teach you? Do you have any big lessons from your failures? I mean, I think I was saying to the students of the National Hellenic Student Organization that the most important thing for young people is to embrace their failures. Mm -hmm. Because it's only through failure that you become successful. If you don't um, retry something or look at things in a new light that will make you successful, you'll never move forward. I think the problem that a lot of people have is to succumb to their failure. But I think what we all need to do as a culture is to rise above it and learn from it. Yeah, big message. And my final question is gonna be for uh, New Year 2021, where as you know, as uh, Greece, we celebrate, we have the anniversary of 200 years since the Greek revolution in 1821. Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask you if um, UCLA is planning any um, related projects? UCLA has many, many projects planned for 2021, and I'm hoping to send a list to the community in the next few weeks, um, beginning with a number of scholars who look at revolutions from different perspectives, like David Bell, a very well-known professor from Princeton, to uh, Pavlos Bubulis, who will be giving a very intimate tour of the Bubulina Museum in Spetses, Mm -hmm. to a one-man show by Yorgos Karamichos called Makrianis Unplugged. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, and hopefully, also, uh, depending on COVID and God willing, we can all be together, uh, the premiere of an opera called Polymnia, which takes up not the Greek Revolution of 1821, but another uh, story of resistance against the Turks in 1912 and the effects in Northern Greece of um, people arriving as refugees, people being exiled from their homeland. And we see these two um, performances, Makriani's Unplugged and Polymnia, as showing two sides of the same story of the Greek experience um, living under Ottoman occupation. Mm -hmm. Very different results. So you gave us a good uh, example about your, uh, the project's planning for next year. And at this point, I would like to thank you for being here with us and probably we'll have an opportunity to have another discussion as well another time. Thanks so much. And I welcome you to UCLA when we reopen and especially because we'll be finally inaugurating our new center space, which will have all kinds of touches from Greece that people will delight in seeing. So thanks so much. I will be one of your first guests, that's for sure. <laughs>